So I, I won't be too uh, long with it because I know people want to ask questions. Um, but what I would say is that the most important thing is preserving culture. Preserving <laughs> culture. That is very, very important because we are in a diaspora here in America. And this is not our native culture. So we have to examine the leaven that has been sown into the entire lump to see if it's that which is supposed to be there to allow us to rise or if it's that which is there that's going to cause us to flat down. And the reason why I'm saying this is because before I had to ask her over here, what was the culture that we were maintaining before we came to America? Come on. See, the problem is that a lot of people are not doing research, and what happens is after years and years of slavery and then so-called freedom or liberty or the illusion of such, we think that now adopting the ways of our slave master makes us equal. That's right. Gives us back our identity. That's right. right. So we have to do a cultural analysis and see. Let me tell you something. Anybody here familiar with uh, microbiology? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you know, microbiology, they have what's called cultural studies. Come on. Right? So we have a cultural study to start for a petri dish. What is the purpose of the petri dish? To keep everything contained within that culture. Right or wrong? Then not only that, you have the agar fluid there that feeds the microorganism, right? Then you have the medium which you're growing the organism in. Did you know that after slavery, they were doing nothing but cultural studies on a macro level on us as a people? Are, are you understand what I'm saying? That means that if the organism is in its natural environment, it will replicate a particular way. But when we take it out of its natural environment and we put it in a petri dish, now we can control how this organism functions. We can modify this organism. Come on. So what am I saying? We had a culture at one point in time before we came over here, and now once we got brought over here, now they had to find a way to put us in a cultural study so they can control the development of our culture and of our spirituality and as our function here on this planet. The reason why I'm saying this is important is because when you do a study on indigenous cultures, guess what? Over 70% of them are in religious relationships. How about that? That's interesting. But the other 30% is normally in Europe and in America. Woo! Is that by chance? I don't know. Or is that by design? You see, so we have to be able to look at the leaven that's being sown into the mold. And I'm going to say this, um, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all uh, ask your questions. Uh, since we're dealing with Israel right here, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 24, very, very important, verse 5 on, and we go to Deuteronomy 21 and 15. I want to read this real quick because I also want to get these points of reference so we can see what the culture was for the people. All right? Read! Now, when we go to Deuteronomy 24 and 5, it says, If a man has recently married, he must not go to war or be given any duty. When we go to verse 6, see? Brothers missed that. It says, For one year, he's supposed to do what? Make his wife happy. Woo! Oh, let's slow that down a second, brothers. I don't know who's in a believer's marriage who took one year to make that woman happy before inviting somebody else in. See, we have to look at the culture, okay? Now, this, this is very important because if that woman is not happy, he is not doing his job and is not fit for labor. The man don't work, he can't eat. Are, are y'all feeling what I'm saying here? So what I'm saying is that that's number one. Number two, Deuteronomy chapter 24 deals with if a man has two wives because we have situations when a man will get married to two women and then hate one and love the other. Most of us said, nah, you're not, it's not going down like that. So what am I saying? I'm saying these are cultural precepts that was embedded in the culture that we had before we got in our diaspora, and there's water there. But just like any tool that can be used for destruction, you have to be able to tramp the one who you place the tool in the hands of. This is why we need those who are in polygamous marriages, who are elders and have been doing it for years, be the ones to court over those who are considering it. See, it may be feasible or plausible to have a monogamous relationship in the current society and we want to conform to their standards. But when we go back to our original culture, what are we doing to put these guidelines and these safeguards on our culture while we're here in our captivity? We believe we're in a captivity, right? Are we going back to this culture system that is safeguarding and protecting all the interests of the people who created it? So I'm not knocking anybody that has a monogamous relationship. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Nobody should superimpose the believers' beliefs on you. But at the same time, you have to be able to don the understanding that we are in a cultural study and what kind of organism were we at and how we were thriving in our natural environment before we got put in that petri dish. And I'm going to leave it at that. Nice. Woo! Yeah. All right, let's go to our first question, please. Shalom, everybody. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody's leadership, but when 
Now, listening to some of the ladies' justification, it kind of brought me back to when I was in the world. Because one thing I realized, most of my men disrespected our women in some form or another. That's just rampant in our community then, and still rampant in our community now. So I kind of took advantage of that by not being that dude. So it made it a whole lot easier for me to be elevated in the woman's eyes because they weren't used to seeing certain actions. That's right. But now, being in the truth, there's certain things I was a fornicator. I just didn't lie. Now that I can't do that. But I'm listening to some of the justification, and it seems like it's coming from a point of pain as opposed to scripture. In other words, you've been dogged by. We have been, we've been dogged, we've been out for a long time. And now that you find a man that's not hidden, not disrespecting his quote unquote, and you're using that as a means to, well, this guy's treating me right, no bruises, no emotional pain, <laughs> as a justification for it. Because me personally, many people, brothers I've met, dealt with, I have yet to meet a brother, so I'm going to disrespect you if I'm not saying the church is over. I personally would question why I would have to say that. Would it be a lust factor? Would it be a carnal factor? So that's something I'm personally dealing with. And just to get one woman straight, that's the harder job for me. So my question is, any scripture that can really support the justification of polygamy in this day and time especially, because I think we other people are corrupt. So we, before we even begin to go there, we need to address ourselves. Because the nation is here. Come on. Strong. We can stop aborting our babies and we have a double like that. So if that an issue, that's it. Okay, now we are. Well, I would uh, definitely respect what the brother was saying, but there was two scriptures that was already brought out. One was in Isaiah, and also what uh, Brother Divine Prosper just brought. And he made a statement. He said, because there's no physical abuse, there's no emotional abuse, basically saying, in other words, she's happy. So if a woman is content with being happy, what is wrong? Because it's not a monogamous relationship, she should reject it. So these are some of the questions that we have to ask ourselves. Now, if you as a male may feel that, and, and we, we got to dialogue, if you as a male feel that maybe uh, polygyny is not for you, like the brother said, don't superimpose it on any other people. That's you right. Understand, when it comes to intellectual, and, and intellectual mate selection, the woman is usually driven to the more dominant male. That's to, right. For, for mate survival for her offspring. So if there is a man that is a leader or has intellect and knowledge or is physically developed, she is going to gravitate to him no matter how many women like him because she knows it's dire need for her offspring to produce superior offspring. Man, talk so that truth, man. Men think how men operate is they deal with a linear thought process in their brain, meaning they can compartmentalize and separate emotional feelings from each woman where a woman can, she has a certain a cyclical um, um, aspect of the brain where everything is incorporated in one aspect in one mind so she cannot separate and drop that science man person or uh, this person she can't separate the emotional aspect not naturally so what I'm saying to you scientifically our brothers are built for polygyny and if you would set up a community that didn't have polygyny and a community that had polygyny the community that had polygyny what swallow up the um, eventually that doesn't have polygamy because you will have women in your organization that has to go outside the organization in order to find a mate that's and right in the doorstep of polygamy that's women. right that's so right or at the is, devil's door my question is if you reject polygamy if my statement is if we reject polygamy then we are creating an environment for harlotry in our own society because we're going to have a lot of sisters that's going to be visiting shops to go get some toys to satisfy themselves because they can't find themselves a male. And this is some of the stuff that we have to consider like individuals because now, how can you see, this is what I ask, when it's Torah, if it works in the community, then it's Torah. If it doesn't work in the community, monogamy for everybody does not work in the community. Somebody has to leave that community and go elsewhere. And where would they go to another community where the brother's lying to them and telling them that it is monogamy and it ain't? It's and it ain't. That's right. That's right. Drop that science. Hold on, hold on. I, I just want to say something because every everything these everything this brother said is right on. A lot of what these brothers and sisters are saying culturally and what we are experiencing is correct but this is the point that I wanted to bring out 
I never said, and I wanted to put it out there. We know that there's polygamous relationships in the Bible. We know that that was our culture. But what we need to really focus on is what the Most High wants. And I'm going to make this clear real quick when I say this. And I, I don't need claps or anything because, because I'm seeing this. Is that if I wasn't up here, this would be, just be a panel on how great polygamy is. And listen, I'm not against, I'm going to say this, I'm not against anything the Bible gives rules on. But like some of the scriptures, but it has to be clarity because when we put things out here, you have to realize if there's not enough clarity as elders, as people in, a, in authority, if it ain't clear, somebody going to take stuff and run with it and do the wrong thing. So let me make this clear. I'm only going to take a couple of seconds before you question, brother. I want to say this. Yes, the two scriptures the brother quoted was correct. But what wasn't quoted is that the woman that ain't treated a certain type of way in that same law was given substance and, and, and was able to go out from the house. So they ain't a relationship that stayed together. That's a polygamy relationship that didn't work. So what I'm saying is that when you put out scriptures, don't put out one where the relationship didn't work if you want people to see polygamy. And when you look at the next scripture, the woman that wasn't treated right was what? She was given substance and was what? Led away. Where she could live her life and try to do what's right with somebody different. Well, let's pull out that scripture. Oh, oh, I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> yeah, my man. I'm going to pull it out because I don't, let me tell you, I listen and I don't quote anything I don't know. And we should do this because what I'm saying has to be a levity. I'm, I'm doing this not just for this panel. It's not about right or wrong. I'm doing this so that everyone can have a level head on this. Because if they don't, they'll just sit here and listen to an opinion of people who see that polygamy is right. And, and, and it ain't about pros and cons. It's what the Most High say. Right, what does the Most High say? So what does you it say? It? So let's pull out the scripture. Yeah. Let's get it. Read. Let's get it. And you notice I never said that there wasn't examples of poly polygamy in scriptures. Everyone knows that polygamy was part of the Israelites culture. That's without question. Okay? But we also got to see the effect that would have on us not having an institution developed woo, first. Woo. We, hold on, I'm saying this. Let me, let, hold up. Let me, I'm going to pull it out. We're saying let's come together and get it together first. Yes. Before we start talking about this, the laws must be executed and put down first so the people will know what will happen if they break things. We had that in Israel. We don't have that right now. So I'm saying we put this out all the good things about polygamy right now, but there's no law in place amongst us to execute righteousness. And that's what we need to be talking about. And then polygamy, monogamy, every other thing coming that under that spectrum of order. But if we put things out right now, people are gonna look at the positives of polygamy and they're gonna sin. They're gonna sin, and guess what? They're gonna be more people sinning than one happy relationship that's working. Okay, let me read that scripture. I'm gonna read the scripture. That's what we're waiting for. Come on. I'm about to Google it. Cause you got you got the computer and the Bible. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved, and another hated, that's the one, right? Okay. Deuteronomy 21 and 15, please follow. Let me get it. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, 
that he may not make the son of the beloved the firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn, but shall acknowledge the son of the hated before the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. Yes. The right of his firstborn, the right of the firstborn is his. So this is talking about inheritance. Yeah. Okay. The inheritance switches, which that person lose, that woman lose the right of the firstborn. She doesn't. It says it right here. Let me read it again. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and the, the beloved and the hated, excuse me, if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. So the benefits go to the one that's hated, according to scripture. No, no, that, that's not what you said earlier. You said you said the inheritance which plays. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it was in mind. It's just, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I stand corrected on what I said. Okay. But what I'm saying is there's scenarios in scriptures where polygamy in the scenario is not all peaches and cream. That was my point. No, you, you, what you, where you went is you said that the other one left and was sent off, and that's what we was looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I say corrected on it. That's another scripture. Hallelujah. Where, 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 no, no, no. Let me make that clear. That's another scripture. If, if, if the person don't take care of things okay. and don't and don't provide the the, the food and the shelter. And, and the things for that woman, then the woman can go. Hallelujah. That's that's a different scripture. Hallelujah. But, intertwined too. but still, those are scenarios in which it didn't work. Alright, All right. that's that's my point. All right. All right.